it's it's close to 300 people that we pay that day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions for Mr. McGarry? Councilor Cruz, I have a question if you can fill it. John, just to kind of piggyback what Councilor Cruz was saying in terms of getting uh, poll workers, is there a thought process to try to reach beyond the scope of Brockton to get people that are, are more multi-language uh, linguists? Councilor, I have, over the years, I have approached all the associations in the city several times with, to no avail. I have also approached the local colleges to no avail several times. I am currently working with the social science chair at Brockton High because as you may or may not be aware, a few years ago the laws on poll workers changed and we are allowed to hire 17 and 18 year old uh, high school students with permission of, this, of the principal. And uh, we are looking at getting some of the bilingual students from Brockton High to work for us. It's, it works out well this year, Councilor, because the schools have closed for uh, the November election. <coughs> So that's what we're looking at for November. Uh, the, the other requirement is that we do not have to hire from within the cities and towns any longer because it is so difficult to get qualified poll workers or people, again, people willing to put that kind of time commitment up into it. So it's all of us are in the same boat across, actually across the entire country, which is finding enough qualified poll workers to man the positions. It's, it's much more uh, demanding today than it used to be when, um, when we started, or I started out as a voter quite you know, a number of years ago. Um, and because of wanting to make sure everybody gets the right to vote, the laws have changed significantly and are going to change significantly more over the next few years. So um, it will be a struggle to get people that will be willing to do the job for us. John, when I was in Brockton High in the 80s, they had teachers, my father was one of them, that actually J.J. Lyons, the city clerk, had designated mm -hmm. these teachers to actually be registered wardens within the schools. Does that still exist or no? No. We don't have to, I mean, you have to, obviously have to be available. Um, if the school would be willing to uh, let's see, the issue is that you have September when the schools are open and you have November when they're closed. So in, in November, obviously, in the, and they're only going to close the schools in the state election cycle years. Our city election years, the schools are going to remain open as of right now okay. for both elections. If they, you know, if someday it comes to being them closed, then obviously it would be great to get some of the teachers to, uh, to get involved. Okay. Uh, but it's... Uh, a timing situation right? it's a timing situation getting in getting obviously getting enough substitutes to cover those that want to participate uh, because there are parts of the country where public employees <laughs> are allowed to man the polls on election day so okay thank you very much yeah. councillor rodriguez uh, thank you mr chairman uh, mr mcgarry how are you good evening councillor uh, just just a quick question on my part um are there any plans to from your office to promote elections in the city a little bit more in terms of, I mean, you, you, you drive in Boston and there's billboards uh, all over the place reminding folks of when election days do take place. Uh, we try those sandwich boards here in the city, um, but for some odd reason, it seems that it's not doing what it should be doing. And um, I know I can, I can probably speak for a lot of people, but you know, when, um, when you hold presidential elections, you've got 30,000 plus people voting on those elections, and then you have municipal elections with only about a fraction of that voting. Uh, it leaves one to wonder, what else can we do to get folks motivated in, not necessarily just have you know, great candidates like the, the council that you see here, but, um, <laughs> but actually, but actually kind of at least motivate the population in the sense so that they can actually come out and participate in that process. Council, we have tried a few different things over the years. I had, I had some, um, some of the business uh, owners that have had uh, electronic signs cooperated in the past, but um, you know, businesses change. They, they're, sometimes they're willing to do it, sometimes they're not. Um, this is an issue that I, I talk to actually many people about. I'm old school. I'm a citizen of this greatest country on the earth. Every year, there are a minimum of two elections, a primary and a general election. Here in the city, we do a preliminary and a general election. But you're talking a minimum of two elections across the country 
you know, in a town it's in the spring or in the fall uh, for, the, no, for the, the November election or the town elections in the spring. But as a citizen of this country, it's up to you to do your civic duty and participate. It's not just living in a city, it's getting out, it's getting involved in your community and in your state and being a part <laughs> of the process. So yeah, can we help? Maybe there's some few things that we can do. But I want to see it going back into the schools and I want to see, see it being taught and we're talking about things like that now, civics. But it is your duty as a citizen of this country to know and be involved and care enough to get out and do what you should be doing. No, the reason why I'm bringing that up is that, you know, um, the November elections, basically everybody knows when it takes place, you know, in the Tuesday in, election, in November, it's well known across country and things like that. I'm talking about the, prime, you know, the preliminaries of the primary elections where uh, I believe ours was a week or so before Boston's this time around. You know, it's not basically around the same it's, time. It, it's not, it, it's not, that the September election is not, and is not uniform across the state. Right. Because again, cities do it by their uh, charter and what is written into the charter and towns have their spring election, a totally different election cycle. So they have, they'll have their town elections in, in April and then they'll have the November election with the rest of us and sometimes they'll have, you know, they could even have a September election too. Um, but <coughs> part of that also falls on you as the candidates, you know, is to get the word out. Um, I don't, don't, I haven't had money, I'm working, like, as I said, this is your first time to look at this budget council, but if you look back 15 years ago, I was significantly more money in my budget than I have now. I had more staffing, I've lost half my staff. Over, the t over that time frame. And, uh, you know, we're still doing, and the work increases because of, we are getting bigger turnouts in the larger elections councilors, whether, you know, we, at that last presidential was the largest that I've seen ever in the city of Brockton. We had close to 80% turnout. Um, so you do see it when there's something that people care about now. Obviously, one of the roles that you folks play in the off year in the city election cycle is to stir up the interest amongst the electorate to get out and come out and vote for you guys. And I, I know the mayor's behind me, and it's the mayor's seat. So um, it has a lot to do with the kind of races you have or if they're open seats. So, you know, there are many factors that go into the, you know, plus the apathy that I, is what I fight against. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. My pleasure. Thank you, Council. Any other, Council Neary? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, former Good evening. City Council from Ward 3, Mr. <laughs> John McGeary. How are you? I hope I kept the seat warm for you, Council. You, you did. Several of them, I think, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> in any case, um, John, and I came in a few minutes after you, you had already started your presentation, but I believe you indicated, like most other departments have, that you're level funded. Um, going into the next fiscal year, which naturally, um, you know, everybody is because of the circumstances we're under. But I just happened to, um, just a question, because it does, I think, maybe pertain to a future budget or even the upcoming budget somewhat. But I, I happened to be this morning with this morning's coffee um, and looking at the beacon, and I noticed a, an article where it indicated how the governor signs laws change in the election process, and I found it interesting as I did read through it, and, you, and I'm sure you've seen it as well, but I mean, just, just looking through just to see that there's provisions for an online voter registration system, expanded early voting, post-election audits, pre-registration for 16, 17 year olds, training for local election officials, changes to the inactive voter rule, and then, you know, the law establishes an early voting period in all cities and towns. Um, it, I mean, it looks to me like, you know, a lot more, going through the technology system, and I begin to wonder, I mean, where you're level funded, you've lost positions, is this something that's going to affect you? Seriously, where you're gonna, you know, it, it, it's gonna have some type of a bearing on the people that you have working within, within your office, I would think. Am I, am I off base or not? Uh, not at all, Councillor, and I was discussing that with the mayor and the CFO earlier today, that uh, for this budget, it's not gonna have, a, have any impact. It's f the uh, laws first come into play in the 2016 election season, which would actually be 
the 2017 budget. Okay. Um, so, but it is, uh, right now it's an unfunded mandate. Okay. And I have been in discussion with our, um, our state reps and our senator to um, make sure that these things get ironed out before they hit sure. uh, in two years. And, and that's the comment made is they, um, they, there was a big push for these election uh, law changes, but um, the nuts and bolts of it have not been worked out yet. Yeah, because I, I even, you know, looking at it and seeing early voting will take place at local elections. I mean, I'd be very concerned to know that you can advertise in March or April to, to vote for, you know, whatever the situation be for a city election, and yet we, when, we don't even know who could be running in a city election. I, I mean, those things, maybe I'm off base at, at that, but I mean, those things just have some concern to me as well. I mean, uh, you know, if there's early voting, you know, what box are they kept in? You know, you know what I'm saying? And um, you know, it, it, it's there are some close races it, over the years as well, where you've had to come, you know, you've had to had recounts and, uh, and I was one 10, 11 years ago in, in my situation, but, um, you know, those things just, those things just concern me a little bit. So at, I just at, wanted as of right now, council of the plans are, are uh, only for the uh, state election cycle. Okay. We would probably have to do a home rule if we wanted to change things down here yeah. prior to elections. Uh, it's 11 days before the election. Uh, it would be the early voting and it would only be for the November election. It would not be for the primary elections as, as it's currently written. Unless, again, we've got two years, so you don't know what the legislature is going to do between now and then. But it will, um, it's definitely going to have a huge impact. And the security issues of the ballots, where, you know, exactly. uh, how we're going to handle the counting of them. There's all sorts of things. And that's why it currently, it's an unfunded mandate. So let's see what, uh, what the State House does to uh, aid the cities and towns. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Keep thank up you, the good counsel. work. Thank, thank you. Thank you, counsel. counsel. Any other questions? Saying none. Thank you, Mr. McGeary. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Have a good Chair. night. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Madam Clerk, if we could go on to the next one. Traffic Commission, Captain Robert Tabari. I think we have, we have License Commission. Scott McDuffie, Chair. You're right. I skipped him. Sorry about that. License Commission, Scott McDuffie, Chairman. Sorry. <laughs> I almost got you up there. Yeah. Mr. McDuffie, good evening. Good evening, councillors. Do you have a statement, sir? Uh, just a quick, excuse me, sure. very, very short one. Um, uh, the License Commission is pretty much, actually, it's a little bit underfunded from last year. Uh, I can tell you that the Commission and the office, who uh, Administrative Assistant Bonnie Tucker runs, uh, I think they do an outstanding job. They operate under $90,000 a year, and we bring in about $316,000 a year. So clearly, it's a, it's a profitable thing for the city. But I... Uh, if we have any questions, Bonnie is with me tonight. She'd be better at individual budget questions than I would. So, Bonnie, if you want to join us, come on up. I try Council, not to any let questions her off the hook too much. <laughs> for, uh, for either individuals? None? Actually, yes. Council Bonds. The asterisk next to educational incentive, the 2518, huh? what, what does that I'm in sorry. There's an asterisk uh, on the uh, Personal Services License Commission educational incentive. What does that indicate? Because there's no, like, a ledger. I, don't, I didn't see a ledger for that. Or is that a mistake? Yeah. On the breakdown page, license, commission, class, name, title, start date, years, under educational incentive, there's an asterisk. I'm not really sure. Oh. Mr. Conan, do you have, do you have a... Maybe it's a Scrivener's error? Yeah, there's no ledger to exp Okay, it could be a mistake. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for picking that up, Councilor. Sure. <laughs> Any other questions? None. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thanks thank for you. what you do. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thanks. <laughs> Madam Clerk, we'll go on. Traffic we'll get, Commission. Get the Captain, Captain up here now. <laughs> <laughs> good evening, Captain. Good evening. Do you have a statement for us? No, I do not. Okay. Any questions for the captain relative to traffic? Councilor Denapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Captain. Good, e good evening. And uh, welcome to your new assignment. Thank you. I, I just have one question, okay? Um, and I, I know you're brand new to this because you just inherited. Last year's budget was 160,000. You went to 157. Is that because of the, the mayor asked for a, a reduction all the way across in every department? 
Two no. Two thousand. There's a second page to that. Oh, okay. Two thousand thirteen. Okay, it's. I'm sorry about that. I'm half asleep here. <laughs> it's a long week. It's a long, long day. No, Captain, I, I was wrong. Your budget's right, sir. It's uh, it stayed the same. Council, you done? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Go Any questions? Please. Council, you Thank you, Thank you uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, uh, Captain DeBarry. How are you? Good. How are you? And welcome to your first uh, to your first budget. Yes. Um, great. Um, I, I do have one question on the line item pertaining to um, five three one two hundred, which comes public safety. I see the the request there was for 15,262, but the mayor did increase, increase it to 25,262. Now, what is that actually used for that particular That's line the, item? The police detail for the line painting. Is that what it is? Yes. Okay. So, so we, okay. No, that, that's, that's great. We definitely, definitely need that. So, all right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councilor. Any other questions for the Cap captain? Councilor Stadensky. Yeah, where would I find the money inserted to it? Oh, the stop signs that are going to be put up on some of uh, some of the street and uh, Edson <laughs> Street, uh, different things like that. Where would you find one? the money that's being infused so you can make the public roads safer with some of those stop signs and the public barriers, barrier at the corner of uh, Summer and East? It's under public safety. I couldn't find it either, Cap. Would that? The traffic line item. <clears throat> That's under the traffic line. It's a uh, it's one hundred and fifty five thousand dollars. Very good. Thank you very much, Cap. Thank you, Ms. Florio, as well. Thank you, uh, Council Bonds. Yes. Thank uh, you, Council, Council Stenisky. You good? I'm very good. Thank, Thank you, you, Council Bonds. <laughs> Hi, Captain. How are you? Um, so, just in that same vein, um, would repaint or the repainting of crosswalk indicators would that be under that same line item as well? Okay. Great. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, just if she's done out. Yes, I am. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Council Cruz. Thank you. That line item for signs and line painting and signs and all, do you run out at that amount? Uh, I, have, I have not, no. You have not. So that keep, I mean, so when we're calling you and saying we need a sign here, we haven't had to not do them because you've run out of money this year or the last, well, Patty would probably know the last yeah, couple yeah. of years. I don't know. No. Okay. Thank you. I have to thank Patty for yes. all her help. <laughs> Any other questions, Chairman? Captain, thank you. Thank Have you. a good evening. Thank you, Ms. Florio. We're going to go on to the next uh, agenda item, please. Information Technology, William Santos, Acting Director. Mr. Santos, good evening, sir. Good evening, Council Have President. A statement for us Councils? at all? Yes, I do. Um, I'd, uh, I'd like to thank all of my staff for finding ways to uh, make this happen, you know, with uh, budgets being cut year after year. They do a good job. And I'd like to give just a, a little overview of ITC for the newer counselors. Um, this uh, 2015 budget represents uh, the funds required to continue to provide technology for the city. Most department requests have been satisfied in 2014 budget or have been included in the maintenance costs for 2015. The ITC is an umbrella department focusing on citywide network infrastructure, Munis financial software, department process automation, cellular and landline telephone support, and video surveillance. We also uh, provide hardware and software services, training, and business recovery. We have maintained our level of service, which includes support for 61 locations. And the last three years, we have worked closely with the city's uh, police fire and school departments to advance the technology in the day-to-day -day operations, uh, fire communications, radio amplification, computer-aided dispatch, public safety and security initiatives, and this year our drive is to automate processes and bring a virtual presence to uh, our City Hall website for ease of use and citizen access. We have also allocated resources to upgrade our main library we have added wireless access points, fiber optic connections on every level, laptops for after school programs, and we have committed to replace computers throughout the library system. I'll take any questions. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Any questions? Councilor Danapoli, followed by Councilor Cruz. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just one question. It says information tech, uh, tech uh, capital uh, outlay. You got, you got a reduction of 199,000. Well, it's, was that it's, for capital improvements? Is that what that's for? Yes, the capital request last year was approved at, at 199.5, and this year there's no capital uh, request that had been re approved. Don't you think that's so, necessary? That since technology changes every six months? Oh, absolutely. I, I did put in for some some uh, capital money. It just didn't make it to the budget. So. Okay. Um, All right. Thank you. We did Thank well. You. We did well with uh, the funding from last year. As well. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, <clears throat> Councilor Cruz. Followed by Actually, Council that was Bonds. the same item I was looking at. Was the good, Councilor. Councilor yes, Bonds, followed by Councilor Rodriguez. Yes. Hello, uh, Mr. Santos. I just wanted to uh, to first say, uh, Councilor mm -hmm. Azak and I, we were attempting to use the computers in the Councilor room, and uh, one of them it wasn't really working well. And we phoned the IT department, and Nick um, Alexiu called us and helped us work it out. And he was very, very skilled at what he did. Um, and I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Now, in his position, the technical support specialist, there's um, room for one more, but it's an unfunded position. It is. With all of the, the updates kind of um, that the city is planning, on a lot of, you know, online services and you know becoming more right. tech savvy that's will that be a problem kind of going forward or, or are, you, are you able to manage all of that well we've we have survived although you know more help uh, we've been cut for many years and we've mm. been down that person for several years uh, of course it would be good but uh, we understand how the budgets are are there any other it funding sources like grants or like to try out new um to be uh, like uh, pilot programs for new technology programs and things that we can apply for that you're aware of? Uh, not that I'm aware of. Uh, uh, software I mean, uh, programs? The, the, the granting that I see usually comes either through public safety uh, mm -hmm. or schools. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen much for the municipality itself. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you. That's Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, good evening, Bill. How are you? Good evening. Uh, I just have a quick question um, on the on the agenda. It says that you're the acting director of yes. IT, but yet in the uh, in the personnel sheet here it says that you're the uh, data processing manager. Is there a? It's an old term for the same position. Yes. So a data processing manager. Yeah, and uh, through a stipend, I'm the acting director. Okay, so. So are you also the, the director of IT? I'm the acting director of IT. I'm the data processing manager. With a stipend, I am the acting director. Yes. OK. Hmm. Thank you, Mr. Santos. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any other questions for Mr. Santos? Seeing none, Mr. Santos, thank you. Councilor Isaac, I'm sorry. I missed you. Okay. I'm sorry. Good evening, Mr. Santos. Good evening. First of all, I'd like to thank Nick also. Um, he was a great help to us. Good, very good. Um, I have a question. You have a line for overtime. Yes. But then you also have on call. What's the difference between on call and overtime? Well, uh, on call is to be available um, after 4.30 until 8.30 the next morning. And we work hand in hand with the fire department and the golf department to be available uh, for them, for their computer aided dispatch system. Uh, so you have to pay the um, on call at 20% at of your standard rate. And then uh, if you do take calls and you need to be called out, there's a four hour minimum that's contractual uh, that they get paid out of overtime. So is it, does this go to somebody in your department or is it a separate? Oh, no, no, this is for, uh, you know, the IT department, the reason uh, there's overtime and maybe one of the few departments that have overtime is because uh, of ads, moves, changes uh, of network equipment, uh, maintenance, upgrades, uh, that type of thing, uh, as well as being called in after or on, from an on-call basis. Uh, if we were to take down or maintain systems during the work day, we would put 800 or 1,000 people out of work in one shot. Uh, so to have two guys there for a Saturday or, you know, whatever it takes, uh, nights, uh, every Wednesday we re 
reboot 50 servers and uh, it's just a, a Windows um, thing where if you don't reboot a server, uh, they become sluggish and things like that. So you have to reboot your computers and as well as servers. So uh, that all gets done on an uh, overtime basis. So they're on call whether they're used or not, if I understand correctly. I didn't understand there that. And employees on call, they take turns? Yeah, we have a rotation on. of uh, seven people that go on call from 4.30, um, when, when we're not in the office, from 4.30 till 8.30 in the morning. And uh, if the fire department needs us or the golf or whoever asks for our on-call services, uh, then we make ourselves available. And if we need to go service them other than outside of a, a quick uh, answering some questions, then they get a minimum of four hours and then that becomes overtime. Gets deducted from the on-call. So they get you know, 16 hours in one day of on call, whoever is in the rotation. It's not everybody, it's one person at a time um, for a week. And um, if they get called out, they, they get what is due to them, which is uh, overtime. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Council. Any other questions? Mr. Santos, thank you. Okay. Have a good evening. You too. Madam Clerk, we're gonna go on to the next agenda item, please. Animal Control, Thomas DeChilla, Supervisor. Good evening, Mr. DeCellis. Good evening, Mr. President, counselors. You have a statement, sir? Um, I just have, uh, just like to say that uh, I come before you um, with a level funded budget. And also I would ask that you uh, keep in mind an item that I brought up at last year's budget hearing that the uh, Animal Control Department uh, is, has vacant positions in both uh, kennel worker and uh, clerical worker uh, categories. So the animal control officers perform these functions. So I'd just like you to bring that to your attention as well. And with that, uh, any questions anyone might have? Thank you, sir. Any questions? Council Stewart. Uh, Mr. DeChillis. Good evening, Council. Good to see you. A question about the fact that we have, you and I have spoken uh, about the work that the city is doing to uh, review its ordinances and um, rules around the new laws from the state. Um, uh, the last I knew, the city council attorney was um, working on those. Okay, and, and has the, the clerk and the, and the city council, um, the legal advisors to the city council, they have not connected with you about that at the moment? Uh, no, so sir, I Okay, so I'll, I'll double back and ensure that that happens. My question would be around sort of financially in terms of the budget. Does that, do the new laws have a specific impact on your budget at, at all? Um, I would say not really. Uh, the most involved item in the new changes would be the um, hearing authority, uh, which is another layer in um, deeming nuisance and dangerous dogs. Uh, prior, it used to be that um, an order would be issued. It would be signed by the police chief, and then the uh, dog owner had the uh, option of um, complying or contesting. And if they contested the order, it went to uh, Brockton District Court for the first step. And then it could be contested to a, um, a judge with the hearing authority. What that did was um, created a new step where uh, there's a hearing uh, officer for the city, which is currently right now a lieutenant under the police department, which would hear those cases first, issue any type of order, mm -hmm. and then the dog owner would comply with it or they could go on to a clerk magistrate hearing to contest it. Uh, in that respect, it, it does tie up an officer's um, time to attend the hearing, and um, there could be overtime costs associated with, so you know, there uh, could be a financial impact on that. I see, and so is that something that you're thinking about in terms of the next fiscal year budget, I'm assuming? Well, as far as you mean our overtime line item? Correct. Um, oh. I understand that, uh, you know, times are tough right now, so we're tightening our belt down there. If we don't have enough and the need arises, I would come back before the council to request an appropriation see. if we don't have enough. Okay, great. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairperson. Council DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Mr. DeCellis. How are you tonight? I'm doing fine. Yourself, sir? Uh, 
Last year, you needed a vehicle. Was, did you, you did get one, right? Yes, we did. We got a 2013 E-150 van, which has been working out great for the department. Um, it has helped lessen the vehicle maintenance costs. We're using that as the uh, frontline vehicle at the moment. Okay. We still do have two, uh, two 2006 E-150 vans. Good. One has about 100,000 miles on it. The other one around 80 or so. Um, it's not so much the mileage. It's just the wear and tear daily, uh, being daily uh, driven that takes a toll on the vehicles. Usually we get about 10 year life expectancy out of a okay. uh, vehicle. All right, would, would you do me a favor? And uh, I, know, I know people are watching at home and if they, have to, if they have to call animal control on the weekends, I know you work 8.30 to five every day, correct? Uh, we work Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturdays and Sundays 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Okay, so you work, okay, you work, you work till 11 o'clock at night? Yes. And on the weekends? Yeah, and we're also on call after hours for any emergency. They can call the police department non-emergency line and um, either a police officer will come out and assess the situation to see if there's a need to call animal control or depending on their staffing levels, they may just call animal control directly to respond to any emergency type situation. All right. Have, have, uh, you know what I saw in, in the ward the other day? A deer. We have all different types of wildlife but here. <laughs> <laughs> no, not, not, not Quincy Street. Yeah, they're, they're all over the place. Um, yeah. Probably won't be long before the moose and the bear start coming around. <laughs> Okay, make sure we don't hit one. Thank you, yeah. Mr. DeCellis. Sure. Thank, Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Council. Council Bonds. Uh, Good evening, Hi, Mr. DeCellis, how are you? Um, just a question. Uh, a few meetings ago, there was a representative from, and I can't remember the name offhand, but they spoke about the, uh, the cat pop, uh, overpopulation, and mm -hmm. Council Dubois, I believe, sponsored um, that organization to come. And um, there are a lot of cats down in my neighborhood. I'm right down the street from, from the center there. and. Um, there are a lot of cats around there, and I didn't know, if it, are you working with them? Is there, do you have any plan to work with them to kind of combat the, that? Uh, the Brockton Cat Coalition, we do work with them. Yeah. Um, stray cats are an issue throughout the, the United States. Right. Um, I wish we could do more on the city level. Uh, what we try to do at this point is um, support groups like the Brockton Cat Coalition. Uh, if we're able to help with transport, uh, of an animal to have it spayed or neutered. We do that depending on our staffing levels. Uh, that's what I was gonna ask. It, are, are the, what, the efforts that you do to try to uh, help with that, that comes out of your, like an overtime or the on-call or something? Uh, not so much overtime. We would do that during regular business hours. Okay. Provided we have the staffing in place. We work as a support role. Okay. Um, we, don't, we don't really have the resources, staffing, financial, facility-wise to undertake that type of endeavor at this time. Okay. All right. And I just want to commend your staff. I, I had two um, emergencies um, after hours a, a couple of times, and you know they were very professional and calmed me down from crying and everything else. So I want to commend you, you and your staff. Well, thank you very much. Great I'll job. pass thank that you. on. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for Mr. DeCellis? Seeing none, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Have a good night. You as well. Madam Clerk, we're going to go on to uh, number 11. Yeah. Emergency Management, Stephen Hook, Director. That's sad. Mr. Hook, good evening. Boy. Good evening, Councilors. Welcome to the budget hearing. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Do you have a statement, sir? I just want to thank the Councilors for my appointment two months ago. Uh, it's a pleasure to lead the Emergency Management Agency. Councilors, any questions for Mr. Hook? Councilor DiNapoli. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and good evening, Mr. Hook. Um, evening, Council. Uh, your, on your budget, you have a, uh, an open funded uh, position that uh, I guess you, you would like to request to have filled. Okay. How many, how many times a, a, a month do you meet? You meet once a month? As far as, well, the, the agency as a whole, Councilor, uh, we're constantly planning, and, and it really should be a full-time agency. Um, we currently have two part-time, nine-hour-a-week positions, myself and another part-timer that's running the agency by ourselves. Um, there's a lot going on, um, you know, as far as uh, emergency preparedness, uh, grant opportunities, meetings with the uh, business owners and, and, and agency, city agencies. 
So I, I asked the mayor and the city council to uh, consider funding that unfunded <coughs> position uh, of the deputy director. Most, most of your money comes in through grants, correct? Correct. Um, how much of it? 80% of your budget? Mr. Conan, would you know that? Would you know how much of Mr. Hook's budget is funded through the federal government or the state? Off the, off the top of my head, I don't because the grants don't appear in the, uh, in the budget process. They're, they're separately handled as they come in. Because I know it, we, we, we accept the grants yes, as they Yes, as we they do. I, I can get you that information, Constable, but I don't does know off it, the top of my head. Does the city contribute anything into, the, into this? No. It's all, Th this it's all appropriation great. is the city's appropriation for emergency management. The grants that he receives, I don't recall any having it match. Okay, so this is okay. This is so this budget of forty-eight nine is city side. Yes. Okay. Who answers my question? Thank you very much, Mr. Hook. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Council. Any other questions for the director? Yes, actually. Council Bonds. If I might, um, does the management service have to? Do, do you have to hold an insurance policy? Because I, I know recently you had the um, volunteer meeting for folks that wanted to come out and volunteer and I, I wasn't able to go, but whatever they might be deployed to, are we liable for, you know, if, if they were to go to an emergency or some sort of catastrophe, would we be liable? And do you have insurance in here for that, like a li liability? We do not. The, the, uh, some of the volunteers are covered under the 1996 Federal Volunteer Protection Act. Okay. Um, but at some point, we need to, I'll come back to the city council and to the mayor, we need to make those, we need to recognize the, vo the CERT volunteers as special employees of the city. Okay, so as a <clears throat> special employee volunteer of the city, would they get paid? They would not get paid, but they would get, they would be, they would fall under the city's uh, umbrella insurance, I believe. So they'd get benefits? No. Just if... Um, they could collect if they were injured, though. A liability. I believe so. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other questions for the director? Council Azak. Good evening, Mr. Huck. Good evening, um, Council. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Um, I have a question. Just, I'm not sure. I, it says here vehicle repairs and maintenance. Yes. I didn't realize there was a vehicle. What type of vehicle is it? <laughs> well, we have uh, a couple of vehicles, actually. We have a 2004 Ford Explorer, we have a 2003 Crown Victoria, and we have a, uh, an old dialer bat bus that was donated by BAT um, that we utilize, um, that we're gonna transfer, we're gonna work with the police and fire departments to uh, make that a command post uh, so other agencies can use it. Uh, we also have a trailer that we trailer around our shelter equipment and the other equipment that we need for emergencies. What about gas um, fuel for these vehicles? Is that in your budget? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Councils. You. Any, any other questions for the director? Seeing none, good evening. Thank you very much for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Madam Clerk, we're gonna move on to uh, number 12, please. Board of Health, Louis Tataglia, Executive Director. Mr. Tataglia, good evening. Good evening, Councils. Good to see you, sir. Same here. Any statement? Um, what you have before you is basically a level funded budget. Um, all of the personal services um, are all contractual and um, the rest is very straightforward. Any questions for Mr. Tatalia? <coughs> have a good evening. Thank, Thank you for all. what you do. Thank you very much. Gonna move on please. Parking Authority, Robert Malley, Executive Director. Mr. Malley, good evening. Good evening. Do you have a statement, okay. sir? Uh, yeah, brief, brief statement, if I could. Um, the parking authority, uh, as you, for the new councils, is fully funded uh, by reserve funds that are generated by the sale of uh, parking permits and meter receipts. Uh, the budget in front of you, in addition, has a, uh, includes a line item for $136,000 for reimbursement to the general fund. Uh, what this budget doesn't include uh, our, our salaries, uniforms, equipment, and all expenses uh, associated with the parking enforcement program, uh, including the parking control officer's salaries, uh, which are paid out of a revolving fund, which is appropriated by the council when the revolving funds come up. Uh, budget's level funded except for the line item for leases, uh, which is increased to cover the leases that we signed in the last year, uh, which were necessitated by the construction uh, 
particularly the Trinity Financial Project, where we lost 120 spaces. Uh, we're now leasing 220 spaces uh, total. And I'll take any questions. Councillor Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mallow, for being here today. Um, just uh, an FYI, um, or actually FY me. How's that? <laughs> um, how much um, how much revenue is generated by the uh, the new parking attendants that we have, or the parking enforcement personnel that we have here in the city? The parking uh, last year was. Um, Say roughly six hundred thousand dollars in parking, right? In parking, parking tickets. Parking tickets, yes, and that goes to the general fund. Okay. Uh, thank you, thank you, Mr. Thank Shum. you, Councilor. Anybody else? Thank you very much, Ms. Melly. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next item. Finance, John A. Condon, CFO. Good evening, Councillors. Good evening, uh, Mr. Conant. My budget contains the in, uh, sums necessary to pay my staff, which consist of me, uh, Marilyn Peters too, which I, I think some of you know, uh, Mel, um, and uh, uh, Sue Thompson, who works in my office and is paid fully by my office, but actually provides probably 60 to 75 percent of her uh, time in serving the auditing department, doing um, uh, accounts payable work that she's been doing since they were reduced in staff there several years ago. My budget also includes money to pay for, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, contract to obtain Medicaid reimbursements for special education students in the school department. So uh, that's a contract where uh, they uh, examine all of the costs that are paid out of district for medical costs for special education students. And to the extent the revenues return to the city, we, own, uh, we owe them a, a response of about, I think, about 7 or 8%. That's a little over $100,000 in my budget. Insurance since for liability insurances are in my budget. And also in the last year or so, we've engaged in the solar um, contracts where we contract with a uh, series of developers outside the city who are, uh, have created solar fields. The, the electricity from those solar fields is sold to, uh, under state law, is sold to um, offset the bills in the various departments where the meter exists. And that reduces their budget by the extent of the credit. And we re reimburse the solar field by about 80 to 90 percent, depending on contract, for that cost. So that's a large budget in my, my, my budget, but it's saving money across the city. And I'll take questions. Uh, Council Cruz. Uh, just two quick questions looking at the personal services that specialized secretary open funded. You plan on filling that? I know. Well, I plan on of... filling a position if I receive the funding, Councillor. However, in um, I think it's the next council meeting, there's a proposal that's pending. <laughs> If you recall when the Department of Revenue was here a couple of years ago and did the audit of the finance functions, one of their recommendations was to create a successor in the finance department for the CFO position. So the proposal would be to create a title called budget director, it would be under me, and it would not be Mel's position, it would be an additional position, um, it would be paid at the same rate as the assistant treasurer collector or the assistant auditor and we'd advertise and, and go forth with it. So the amount in my, in my budget is for a part year on that secretary salary. That wouldn't be sufficient to pay that. I would not fill both jobs. I would fill one if I get the ordinance passed, and it would be filled for part of the year. If, if, I, I, don't, if I don't get the other position created, uh, I do think I'm a bit st short-staffed, and I'd like, to, I'd like to fill that job. Because that was actually open last year, too, and you never filled it, correct? No, I did fill it, uh, oh, okay. and the, uh, the person that was hired didn't work out. And, okay. And then I just want to make sure I'm not misreading. I don't see anything there for separation costs in your office, correct? No, there are no intentions on my part of uh, departing. Uh, <laughs> Thank goodness for that. May, there may be others who wish it, but it's not my intent to depart. <laughs> I, didn't, uh, I didn't want to ask you right out, so that's yeah. good. Thank you. Thank oh, you asked, you asked the question the other night. The number is 24. It isn't 23. My, my counting is this not is as your, busy. Well, that's what I thought. It's your 24th budget. That's yeah, the 24th. I yes. want to thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks. It's, uh, walking us through this uh, so well and I'm sure the mayor thank, thank you, you for all yes. all you do and you uh, make it make it simple for us so thank you well, thank Although you it's, thank I do you appreciate it's not that. Warm thank because you. I don't have any fans this year <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where they are <laughs> <laughs> council bots uh, yes sir yes so you said that if you are if you're allowed to create that budget director, director yeah. position um, you wouldn't fund this 
secretary one, correct? I wouldn't fill the secretary's position. You wouldn't fill it, okay. Would that be sufficient staff for you, though? Because well, no, I, I I think the Department of Revenue was actually recommending that there be an additional position to provide some successor planning. And, and truthfully, I think um, that would help uh, to have somebody in my office uh, learning. Although Mel does an outstanding job, I don't mean that as a as a critique of her. This this is uh, would be a step above the financial analyst position. On the other hand, I also think it's true that there are people who are working for the city now in other finance departments, I don't want to go into names, who I also think would be capable if they were interested in assuming that job. So it isn't necessarily true that if that position were created and filled and I were to depart, that that would be the chosen candidate. The position is chosen by the mayor. Uh, I mean, it's a, it's a mayor's appointment, the CFO position, I mean. Um, but even if I get that position, it would be nice also to have additional clerical help down there. There are times when this work, you know, is it's a, it's a lot all at once, and we don't really have the staff or the production capacity to do it. But I've got by without it. I'm not old and decrepit yet. Mel's very young, so we're <laughs> I think we're able to get by. It would be nice, but not at this not at this time. I'm just looking for the one one job. Okay, thank you. Okay. You all said, Council. <laughs> can always do a follow-up if you think, uh, if anything. Uh, Councilor Isaac. Good evening, Mr. Good Conn. evening, Councilor. Um, I have a question. It's not directly uh, for your budget, but I'm asking it of you um, because you're our CFO. Um, do we have any um, surplus balances in our enterprise funds? The enterprise funds don't have surplus balances. Uh, they're, they're appropriated in this budget to the extent they exist. Uh, the way that works is that at the close of a fiscal year, we close the books. Uh, it takes a while to do that. We don't even begin it until the end of the summer because there are these accounting rules called 60-day rules. We've got to get through that period and, and sort things out. Then we begin the process of closing the books. The enterprise funds are a little bit different because they're uh, unique unto themselves and it's not as difficult to close there as it is in the general fund. They, they aren't affected by all these other funds like the general fund is. However, once we've closed the books on a fiscal year and submitted all of our closed books accounts to the Department of Revenue, we get a certification of the available funds in those different accounts. So this year's budget has appropriations on, uh, I think four of the enterprise funds or five of the enterprise funds have retained earnings that were appropriated. And that exhausted whatever available funds there was in those um, uh, enterprise accounts. At the end of the fiscal year we're in, in a few more weeks, the year will close and we'll look to see if there are surpluses in, in those funds again and they'd be made available for the next budget cycle. So would it, do they have to stay as enterprise accounts? Can we change them into general accounts? What is a less restrictive? restrictive accounts, I mean, is it, can they be changed, or do we have to keep To To end, end an enterprise account is a council decision, council and the mayor decision. Uh, I think it's a mistake to do so, because the benefit of an enterprise fund is that the costs that are being borne by that enterprise fund can be covered by the enterprise fund's rates and revenues, and the level of rates and revenues in those funds is subject to your discretion. So to the extent you want to have spending in an enterprise fund, you can support that spending with your own revenues. Once you've closed it, they end up in the general fund revenues, competing with general fund expenditure needs, and subject to the amount of funding that's coming in for all purposes, including the state aid problems we've talked about recently, including competition for the tax levy, and your capacity to raise taxes is limited by Prop 2.5. And, and if you want to go any more than 2.5%, you've got to go to the voters. But in the enterprise funds, if you've got a need to do something that you really think is important for the city, you can adopt a fee to do it. That's why it has been, I think, a good decision in the last 20 years to create these funds. Thank you for clarifying that for me. Um, one, um, one other question that's come up, it's regarding the school department. Mm -hmm. um, it's come up, many of my constituents have contacted me regarding raising the water rate, which we haven't mm -hmm. even gotten there. But um, I was under the understanding that if we did raise the water rate that the funds that came in would go towards the water and sewer and our infrastructure. So, I, but I believe they were told that they can go, whatever surplus will go to the school department. So if you can just clarify that. Once yes. again, I'm sorry that it doesn't have anything to do with No, I, no, I understand but that. I, the, 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 issue, the issue there has to do with um, enterprise fund accounting. And it, it is lawful for an enterprise fund to use its revenues to pay not only for the direct cost inside the enterprise fund, but to reimburse the general fund if there are costs 
that are belonging to the enterprise fund that are paid by the general fund. A good example for, is, say, on the water department, not just the health insurance of the employees, but uh, vehicle insurance is in my budget, building insurance is in my budget, so we can recover those costs, and, and also an in, indirect cost or administrative overhead cost can be allocated to them on a proportional basis. So in most of the funds, those costs are reimbursed on a recovery basis, and Mel in my office, and if you look in your budget book, there's a bunch of sheets this thick that show how those are calculated. And we give those to the Department of Revenue every year, by the way. But those costs are looked at. We look at last year's budget and say, what do we pay for them? And we attempt to recover them on this, on this formula accounting basis. And then it shows up in each of the enterprise fund budgets as an expense reimbursement to the general fund. So in the water enterprise in fiscal year 14, the year we're in, there was supposed to have been, according to those calculations, about $2.2 million paid to the general fund to reimburse us for the costs that were paid in, the, in our budgets in the general fund. Water revenues weren't sufficient, and so therefore about a million six of that wasn't paid. So if they were to raise the revenues for uh, the water rates, it would be possible, in my opinion, for the general fund to recover that in the fiscal 15 budget, make an appropriation of those water enterprise revenues as a revenue item to the general fund. If that were done, in my opinion, if that were done, it would be okay. Then those monies would have to be appropriated by the city council to some purpose in the general fund. It could be any purpose. It could be uh, decided that you wanted to make an additional appropriation to the school department. You may decide you want to increase the reserve funds. You may decide any number of purposes, but one might be some portion of it or all of it going to the uh, schools. Thank you. And um, one last question. Um, thinking a little creatively of how we can bring in some funds into the city. Have we thought about a um, non-resident um, non city employee fee or anything like that that would I bring saw, I saw the letter in the enterprise. Is I've had a lot of dealings with the author of the, of the letter in the enterprise. <laughs> Here's my problem with that. I don't know that there is an illegal basis by which you can impose a special fee on employees in the city who are working for the city but don't reside in the city. I suppose if you chose to, you could have a lower salary as you set salaries either by contract or by ordinance for people who are residents or not residents. But the mechanism that was proposed in the newspaper, I don't see a legal basis for doing. You could ask a lawyer because I'm just a guy. <laughs> Thank you. Councilor, any questions? Councilor Dubois. I just have a follow-up on, uh, on um, Councilor Azak's comments so, because I've also been getting emails and phone calls from um, school side employees, parents, concerned mm -hmm. citizens about the, the rumors that spread through the city spread a lot quicker in these last couple of years because it's, it's quite interesting. I've gotten so many and they seem to all know for sure that that's what's going to happen with the increased water rates. But I have... I have so many constituents that live on roads and have brown water that if we were to raise water rates and not put that money into fixing the water that they bathe their children in that's the color of dirt, I would be so offended. I can't even believe it. So I mean, what, what, is, the, what is the reality? What is the fiscal responsible thing to do if you have an overage, why wouldn't you keep it with the department that needs it, that created the overage? Well, why if it you isn't, do that? if it isn't, if it isn't an overage, if it's a bill owed from a prior year for costs that were actually were water department costs, but were paid in the general fund, then the choice would be the councils and the mayors. Once they decided to raise the rates, you could decide let's repay that bill that never was paid because those were real costs, or you could decide let's appropriate it for a purpose elsewhere. In How the many water years department. out can a debt be re re repaid like that? I'm sorry? How many years out could a debt like that be repaid? Uh, I, I, I could do some research on that. I, I, I believe I have seen literature from the Department of Revenue saying that a general fund can recover a past obligation up to five years. This is only up to one five year. Years. If, so you I, if you do do the research, could you send that to me? Because I'd be interested in knowing more well, about I can that send, as well. I can send you the research that indicates uh, from the Department of Revenue that's in their guidelines that's clearly okay for a year. What I'm looking to do is see if there's anything that says five. But we're not talking about five. We're talking about one if we're, if we're done. And then what? And then with the increased water rate, so it's a 10% increase forever. It isn't just a one-year increase. So then the the extra money in the following year would just stay with the department. 
Yes, that, that would be my expectation, yes. Okay, thank you. All set? I am. Councilor Sullivan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, Mr. Conan. Yes. Mr. Conan, I, I went through your budget. It's, it's spot on, as always. The only question I have, and, and I know myself and Councilor Studinsky got a lot of emails today. Um, could you just clarify and explain to everybody here and those watching free cash? Yep. Because there's some people under the impression that there's $13 million that could be used, and why isn't it being used? And if you could just explain that process. Well, the answer is there is $13 right. million. And if you look at your budget order, it's $13 million and something thousand right. dollars. It's appropriated to pay for the pension cost. And the free cash is similar to the uh, situation I explained to Councillor Azak. In any given year, you're at the close of the year, you would expect if you'd done a good job in budgeting and you, know, you didn't have a disaster, uh, that the operating revenues of the city would have created some form of budgetary surplus. If they did, and usually they do, and we typically were running a budget on the general fund, which is close to $400 million now. So if it's one or 2% in terms of revenues where you bet, beat your revenue estimate by one or 2%, and those revenues are also being spent, so if on the expenditure line you're hitting one or 2% under the expenditure items, you know, on $400 million, that could be anywhere from eight to $16 million. That becomes the potential pool for free cash. The Department of Revenue calculates it. There are some deductions that go against it. The most important to understand is that the general fund serves as the bank for all of the funds of the city, especially the grant funds. You know, the enterprise funds are generating cash receipts of their own. But the grant funds, most of those are reimbursable. So. At any moment, the grant itself would show a deficit because we've spent money and we're billing an entity, an institution or a government entity to get the money back. At the point of June 30, at any point, we may not have been paid. So the Department of Revenue would deduct from that surplus I just described monies that were owed to uh, reimburse uh, for grant fund deficits. Almost like a penalty, right, because you missed the deadline? Yeah, or just, just that the fact that it's, you know, there's a bill that's been rendered, but it hasn't been paid yet. Now, a lot of times we can get them to back away from that by showing here's the bill, okay. here's the agency, there isn't anything to be disputed here. But this, many times and also they will say, no, you can't have that in your free cash. We'll pull it out. So the $16 million may get reduced by a million or two by all of these because we run 400 funds. General fund is one. All these grants individually are each, you know, every time you get a grant that comes in here and you put $5,000 into buying recycling bins or something, that's a separate grant fund that has to be accounted for separately. So all of those have to be closed out. There may be deficits in any, any number of those which are temporary, but at a date and time when you close the books, they may exist. And so when does that, the DOR certify? They, do, they certify it when we provide them with the closed uh, accounts. Okay. But the problem isn't so much, as I said, the enterprise funds or even the general fund, although there's, and that's a pretty complicated transaction series to close those books too. But to get a free cash calculation, we not only have to have closed the general fund, we have to have closed all of these all the special ones. revenue funds so that the DOR can see, do we have deficits in any of those funds? Once we've done that, we submit it to the Department of Revenue for certification. And then when they do their calculations, sometimes they say, oh, we're gonna take a couple bucks off of you, but you'll get a certification. That's usually in March. And that money is then used in the next year's budget. So the cycle is, in a given fiscal year, the books are closed. In the subsequent fiscal year, the books are provided to the DOR for certification. You get that. And then the next six fiscal year, you're spending that money. So that's why I say, as of the close of this budget, when you approve this budget, I'm assuming the free, free cash is going to pension cost. I'm going to guess you're going to pay that. And you're not going to reduce that. Right. That free cash is gone and it won't exist again until this fiscal year is closed and we go through that certification process I described. Okay, that was great, okay. thank I, you. I know it's kind of around and around oh, and around, but, thank but that's you for the situation. That for everybody. Thank but you. There's 13 million is a good number, it's a true number, but the problem is it's not extra money, it's, it's in this budget. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, yeah, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Councilor Barnes. Uh, yes, sir. Just to clarify, um, you said that some of the water, the water fees that came in, they weren't enough yeah. to pay for the services, but so what they did pay back, what they left over was 1.6 million? Yes. Okay, so that's owing. Yes. Okay, so we do. any technical, I guess, new money from any kind of resource would go to pay that first? Well, it, it doesn't have to be because the, the, the appropriation of that money, wherever it comes in, whether it's some rate increases, however, the water money can't be appropriated unless the mayor recommends it. 
and the city council approves it. Oh, but, but you said it was fiscally responsible in your opinion. To I, do I, that, right? In my opinion, okay. it would be a, a responsible action for the city council to allow that rate incre increase to occur and to allow an appropriation of that to reimburse the general fund. And then another step would be needed, which would be how do you distribute that money, whether it goes right. animal control officers, school department, Let's put some money back into the reserves. The stabilization fund is shrunk. I mean, there are any number of uses for it, but I think a legitimate use is the need of the school department right now, too. Okay, and then i um, not sure if you can answer this or if it should go to uh, the mayor. With that $13 million in free cash going to pay the retirement costs, mm -hmm. is, is that the impetus for not raising the 2.5 levy or whatever? No. Okay. No, the, the use of the free cash to pay the retirement cost, uh, my preference would be that there would be $13 million in the budget of additional revenues which aren't reserved, because free cash is, is really a reserve. Okay. It's a balance sheet reserve that's created and replenished to the extent of operation performance, but it's a reserve. My view is that we've got unfunded liabilities that aren't being paid, mm -hmm. and we've got a stabilization fund which because of you know, costs that have been funded through it have, has shrunk to, to, to a lower level. Right. If we had a better budget, that $13 million as it was being generated each year and reapplied each year would be going to building reserves, capital spending, which isn't taking place in the city. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of that that isn't taking place in the city. And the money that's being, the, the, the appropriation that's being supported by free cash would be, the pension appropriation would be supported by general revenues. But What's missing is that $13 million in the revenue base, you know, the regular revenue base, you know, the tax levy, the local receipts, the state aid. Right. Uh, you, you know, you've got my budget letter. I think the primary problem, first right. and foremost, is the loss of unrestricted state aid. It's 10 to 12 million every year. Right. That problem of using free cash for, you know, paying for pensions or, or, or ongoing expenses as opposed to replenishing the reserve funds and, and doing <laughs> capital spending, that's coming about because we lost that that's state aid. Not getting the tax levy increase this year, that's, the, that's, a, that's a problem too, in my opinion, because it's, you know, it's a $2.9 $2 million revenue item that could be in the budget, but it isn't. But the biggest problem is not that, it's the state. And we will not have that next year, correct? The, 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 the appropriation of the tax levy revenue, if you don't appropriate it between now and the time you set the tax rate, you lose the ability to spend it this year. You don't lose it permanently. It still sits there as potential tax levy for any year you want to go get it. No, 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 not the levy, like any kind of, like this free cash. Like you said, once, once it's spent to that retirement um, uh, liability or whatever you said, yep. it's gone. It's, it's gone for now. Okay. It's gone for now. Okay, so there will wait, be, there will be nothing year. else to you kind of wait cushion Christmas any comes other around again. <laughs> outstanding yeah. liabilities. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, Councilor Dubois? Just to follow up. So if, if there is no raise in, of the taxes in this budget right now, um, because I'm concerned when I look through a lot of these different departments that they seem that the cost is going up, but the revenue doesn't seem to be going up. And so I'm nervous if this is a real like 12 month budget, is this gonna get us through all 12 months? And if there are some shortfalls, is what you're saying if they're identified before, before we set the tax rate, um, at any point the taxes can be raised? Is that what you're yeah, saying? Yeah, the, the tax levy, uh, the unused levy capacity is available up until the time you set the tax rate. If you don't appropriate it at that point, now your tax rate is based on what you've appropriated. So, you know, it has to be done before you do that. But up until that point, it's available for use. And for the people watching at home, when is the tax rate set? Well, uh, that's normally done at the end of the calendar year, toward the end of November or beginning of December. It has to be done so that we can mail out third quarter bills and get approval from the Department of Revenue by December 31st. And so if this were to occur, say in, um Say in November, um, there was this huge hole that was that was discovered in our financing, and we needed the revenue. What would the process be? What would happen? Well, the tax levy can't get spent until the mayor recommends an appropriation of those revenues. Uh, if you were to do that, and the city council were to approve it, and you hadn't set the tax rate yet, it could be spent for whatever purpose the mayor proposed, and the city council accepted. So the mayor could come in. What What would that look like? I've never seen that happen. That's well, what actually, I'm asking. I, you may not recall it as because it wasn't explained as, as that particular action. But normally, when uh, we come before the city council at the end of the year, 
we may say that the city has estimated its tax levy with a certain amount of new growth. And we usually estimate that conservatively. There may be additional monies in the new growth that wasn't, that wasn't available. Or the, in past years, the city council has cut a budget. So the budget was balanced at the time it was submitted with the revenue assumption, but now that level of spending doesn't exist in the budget because the city council has reduced some appropriations and so therefore the spending authority doesn't exist. That plus additional new growth in the city could be levied for any purpose before you set the tax rate. Usually we're estimating new growth at an amount less than is realized because you don't want to spend it if you don't realize it. But when it's certified, it's, it's, it, this also gets certified by the Department of Revenue, your new growth taxation. Once it's available, you can appropriate it. And when you appropriate it, it can go to any legal spending purpose. How long does it take for the state to um, certify it? Well, that's what's usually holding up getting uh, the tax rate uh, into the city November. council because it takes, it takes a long time to, because you're looking at every single property in the city where there's been investment. When This isn't market growth. Not a person's house as it exists one year doesn't change, same house but the house values go up, that's not taxable growth, that's, you know, that's gonna reduce the tax rate. But if a person adds a deck, if a business makes an expansion, that's new growth, and that needs to be itemized, accounted for, valued, sent into the Department of Revenue, and for Brockton, that's a lot of different accounts, and they have to see what was the valuation technique and certify that it's real. So I just have two more questions. So if we were to cut a million dollars from the budget that's in front of us right now, um, what you're saying is at any time between now and the time we set the tax rate, the mayor could come in with an appropriation to use that million dollars in a different way. Yes. And would you, would you tell the council that this million dollars was made available through the cuts that you made in the budget or how is the city council to know how would where it come about when the when this has happened in the past, the, uh, the order normally says this is an appropriation from unappropriated estimated receipts of the fiscal year. So, you know, you can't appropriate money that's already been appropriated. It has to be from monies that, and th those unappropriated fiscal receipts, uh, estimated receipts have got two possible sources. One, the revenue items that were estimated are now carrying a higher revenue estimate. Or two, the appropriations that were submitted to the city council for a budget were reduced by council action. That's where it would come from. So what I'm learning here is that really um, the the council has um, control in saying no, yes. but that money that we say no to can keep coming back almost on a weekly basis for appropriation until we don't say no. Uh, uh, any any appropriation from an estimated revenue le level, you know requires that that has to cease at the time you've set the tax rate. After that, the appropriations that the council sees throughout the fiscal year, those are coming from available funds, not an estimate, you know, the stabilization fund, uh, any, yeah. any fund, any fund which has got a balance in it, which isn't an estimated fund, exactly. that can continue throughout the fiscal year. But after you've set the tax rate, you are not supposed to be, and if the Department of Revenue sees you're doing it, they'll jump down on your head, you're not supposed to be appropriating from estimated sources. Okay, so there's there's no new taxes in this budget. There's nothing there is in a here new tax in the budget. It's growth. Is, it's growth, yes. But there's nothing in here that's gonna, well, so there's new growth, but there isn't the prop two and a half amount no, that the city is allowed to. So would, would it be, would you suggest us passing a order to require if these appropriations happen between now and October that we can clearly understand where they're coming from. I'm just worried that we'll be raising the taxes piecemeal. So we'll get through this budget mm -hmm. and everybody at home will think that the prop two and a half percentage Behind didn't you. go up, but then we're doing it piecemeal as we move forward. Is that possible? Well, it is possible that it happened piecemeal because it depends upon the, the pace at which the city receives appropriation requests from the mayor and the, the pace at which the city council decides to act on it. Or whether, whether it happens, whether it occurs piecemeal is in your control because once a, an appropriation request is submitted to you, there's nothing that compels the city council to act. You, you've got it in your domain. You could table it. You could postpone it. You could disapprove it. 
you could reduce it. So it may come in, uh, the $3 million may come in with, I don't think it's going to come in at all, but if, it, if the mayor were d sure. disposed to make the re recommendations, he could be coming in a bucket of time. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous, obviously. Yeah. But it is nothing that prevents the mayor from submitting city council appropriations, which are lawful and funded in some fashion, and there's nothing that compels the city council, once it's got that request, to do anything other but what it chooses with a majority vote of its membership to do. And then if we want the public to know what was happening, we would have to make it a point to say, is this funding um, based on the Prop 2 and a half yeah. income that wasn't in the budget now being appropriated at X amount of dollars? Yes, but normally when we've been making additional appropriation, appropriations after the um, uh, budget has been adopted and before the tax rate is set, the communication either from the mayor and or from me has indicated the source of this appropriation. Yes. Now, if, if, the, if there are several of them to happen, it may be that the first one, say one comes along in August, we decide, well, we gotta get more money to the police department for overtime. Normally, uh, there'd be an, a calculation. It wouldn't show on your agenda, but it would be in the communication in the clerk's office that says, here's how we came up with this balance and unappropriated receipts. You know, we see more revenue coming in on new growth, or we see more revenue coming in because the council didn't spend revenue that was recommended for spending. That's the source of it. It comes to a million bucks or 150,000, whatever it comes to. You'd see that if you chose to. It, it would be in, in the clerk's office of record. Whenever these things come to you, you ask, me for what's going on. I, I, I think I tend to give you the answer. So that's how you'd know about it. The council has it in its domain. The general public would know because they can attend these public meetings. It's not done in the dark or it's on TV. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Council Bonds, do you have a follow-up? Yes, please. Um, thank you. Uh, right after um, the swearing in, there were a lot of requests for uh, movement of money, transfer here, there, and everywhere for all different kinds of things. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can, or if Mel can maybe even, you know, yep. work together. How many accounts, I guess, were tapped out? Oh, well, uh, going I, off, the, off the top of my head, I don't remember. But where those, mo most of those, there were a couple that were coming from balance sheet accounts, available fund accounts. But many of them were coming for unexpended appropriations that weren't going to be spent for the fiscal year. So remember, I said this free cash is being created because a revenue estimate is conservative and you're going to beat it by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. And the expenditure estimate is also, appropriations are also conservative and you don't quite spend that amount of money. So we took, I think one of the proposals was to take it out of this vacancy in my office that was, that was right. still sitting there. I think the unemployment compensation line item uh, was anticipated to be spent and to be reserved at a certain level in case we needed it, it wasn't coming about. So those are the kinds of funds that they're coming from. Uh, Probably not all of those accounts are tapped out. If they are, when you get to a budget two years from now, you're going to have a real problem because right. you've got a $13 million yeah. pillar in this right. budget, which is free cash. If that isn't there to some appropriate, and it won't be, I don't think, quite there, we're, we're seeing shrinking in this because we're squeezed. That, that's, what I'm, that's kind of what I'm getting at because yeah. it sounds like, and I'm just listening to the exchange, it sounds like going into this fiscal year, we're starting with $2 million for a city with bills in the stabilization fund you mean well just of, of any kind of i guess money uh, account money I'm, I'm i'm thinking because i'm new i'm just thinking kind of like personal accounts like yeah. as i go into like a new month or something what i had left over last month like yeah. am i bringing it over or did i spend it to the dime so in spending all of like you said the available general stuff in the beginning from all the requests and transfers and all these other kinds of things um it sounds like a lot of department budgets were like you said, maybe not tapped out, but brought to the line, um, and then not having that extra cushion, I don't think having that, that spent. I, I don't think there were that many accounts that were, that were funded, uh, I'm trying to recall, I don't think there were that many accounts that were, account, were funded out of appropriation transfers from one purpose to another that it came to a large amount of money. Uh, there was a large appropriation for police and fire overtime from a balance sheet account, mm -hmm. but in terms of... Um, uh, over uh, reducing what would be available balances in the expenditure accounts that contribute to free cash. I don't think there was that much. I mean, I, we can look before, uh, uh, not tonight obviously, but we can look before you get to the end of the budget cycle and let you know what those were. Yeah, if you could actually. I just want to see kind of what we had yeah. going into this. Yep. If you don't mind. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Council. Council Rodriguez. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for your uh, leniency in the uh, budgeting 101 class here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm actually going to be a contributor to this as well, too, because I just need some clarification on a couple of things. Being that the city is a um, self-insured when it comes to unemployment, yes. um, 
What is the unemployment cost, at least a ballpark figure or some ideas uh, to the city by the proposed uh, layoffs in the school department? And has these costs been taken into account regarding, meaning adding to the cuts? Uh, and um, in other words, the proposed cuts, does it reflect in the cuts, basically, yes. what we talked about? The, the school department pays out of its own appropriation for unemployment costs. It doesn't, unless it runs out, it doesn't tap into the city's unemployment line items. So to the extent that there are layoffs in the school department, there will be more layoffs than otherwise would be necessary in order to create the funding to pay those unemployment costs. So they're paying for it. So if it's a, if it's a $6 million cut, or savings or whatever, which way you want to call it, it means that they probably have to lay off, what, eight million? Eight million worth of salaries. Salaries to, get $6 to cover million that. Net or nine million worth of salaries to get six million net. Yeah. Okay, so thank you, uh, Mr. Connor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Council. Mr. Chairman. Council Staninsky. If I might, I could clarification from the CFO. Sure. Jake, I appreciate everything, uh, but I know I'm going to get a couple of calls, and one of them is going to be we're talking an estimate made basically by you with all your training. Uh, and we'll make, make it even number, 13 million. And somebody decided that we should do it into the contributory retirement fund. Was it decided that way because that's a mandatory thing we have to do? Well, it's not mandatory for free cash. I mean, the free cash could have been appropriated anywhere in the budget. The reason it's going into the contributory retirement fund is because that has to be paid for the, you know, it's being paid for from the general fund. So the general fund has got a bunch of revenues in it. Some of it are free cash. Some of it are the meter fees and garage fees that Bob Malley was talking about earlier. A lot of it is the penalties and fees and all the stuff that's in the, and these are detailed in your forecaster, by the way, the revenue estimates. So anyway, all of those come up to the free cash or to the uh, total appropriations required to pay for the budget. We choose to use the free cash appropriation for pensions because otherwise you make an accounting, that you gotta pick a big place to park that kind of money. So if you're buying capital items, that's one thing, you know, here's a million bucks for a tri truck, here's a couple hundred thousand dollars for the police department to buy uh, cruisers, that's, but to say we're gonna spend it $50 in Jay's budget for my, my, part of my salary, you just create an accounting nightmare. So once you've decided you're going to use it for operating expenses like the pension, it's a lot easier to simply say, we're gonna direct that 13 million to a big budget item. It could have gone to police salaries, and so some of the police salaries would be paid out of that and the rest of the general fund. But it's easier to do it this way where you just say, at the beginning of July, we owe the pension system 18 million bucks, 13 million 400,000 comes from the free cash appropriation, the balance out of the general fund appropriation. If you look at your budget order, you'll see it. The pension's appearing in both general fund revenues and free cash, and that's how it's working. So it's a decision for, for convenience in terms of where it gets allocated, but the decision that it's going to be allocated is occurring because although otherwise we couldn't balance the budget. All of those expenditures couldn't be supported with other revenues without the use of it. Okay, because I, I know some of the people questioning me are gonna say, well, did anybody lobby them to take some of that money and put it into the school department? Oh yeah, okay, and so let's assume we did it. I think Councillor Dubois asked me this question by email earlier. So okay, well, okay, we'll do it. $13 million goes to the school department and the $160 million general fund appropriation is now, what's that, $147 million? Fine, that's great. We still have to pay the same amount of money that's in the expenditure budget that's being supported by the revenues. So if it's going to the school department, it's not there to pay for the pension, I've gotta find that same revenue source somewhere to pay for the pension cost because it's all, the revenues are going in to the general fund and they're coming out and it's balanced with that being used for pensions. It would be balanced with it being used for something else too. It's just that the something else then would have to be paid for another, in another way. The, piece, the pension would have to be paid for in another way and the money doesn't exist to do that. If we had an extra 13 and a half million dollars above and beyond the two and a half percent since the mayor wasn't going to levy that but let's assume there was a state aid increase of $14 million, well, we probably would have had a different use for the free cash. You know, you've taken that state aid and said, let's spend it and use the free cash to buy fire trucks or increase the school appropriation. I mean, the mayor makes the decisions on appropriations. You know, we talk, there are discussions, but at the end of the day, the budget that's submitted is the mayor's decision on how to allocate money to recommend, and then it's your decision to, accept, as the council said at the beginning, accept it, reject it, reduce it, that, that, that's, that's your game. His game is, here's what I think we should do. 
Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Conant, I said this before, and I want to I thank you for all that you do. I mean, you, you, you're always a gentleman when you come in here, and sometimes you get bashed, but you always hold your Irish temper, which is uh, <laughs> unique, Mr. Cruz. Um, but I, I also, I also want to thank your staff. Thank you, staff. I know Mel was working late into the hours yeah, she's, she's doing this. I mean, thank you for that. That was a lot of work. We're, we're lucky um, to have her. She's a Wellesley grad, an MBA as well. She's very, very good. Yeah, I mean, and you, you have a Rock and resident to Yeah, which is key. <laughs> but, I mean, you could be, with your Wharton degree, you could be in Boston making 10 times. Oh, oh, so thank you. I, I want to thank you. I do enjoy this job. <laughs> thank privileged you. to have it. So thank you. And we're glad you're not leaving. Thank you for asking that question, Mr. Cruz. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that concludes the agenda items, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We are uh, we're going to take a quick recess. Okay. Good idea. Yeah. There we go. We hereby are coming back into the uh, budget hearing for uh, Wednesday, June 11th. Councilors, does anybody have any uh, proposed amendments relative to the fiscal year 15 budget? Mr. Chairman, uh, before we get into... I'm sorry, I want to recognize you, Council Cruz. Thank you. Before we get into cuts, and this has nothing to do with what we've discussed the last few nights, but I did want to take a minute to congratulate the Brockton High School Concert Choir, which was uh, awarded a, a great uh, distinction this past week. They've won a contest from WVBF, and they will be singing on the stage with the band Foreigner, not a cover um. band, the real band, Foreigner, on uh, June 11th. At the uh, Blue Hills Pavilion. In fact, I believe tomorrow morning they'll be on the Lauren and Wally show from 8 to 9 in the morning singing. And uh, I want to congratulate Matt Cunningham and the Wally. choir. They do a great job, and it's a great, uh, great honor for them and a great thrill, I'm sure. Absolutely. Uh, they were on today, Council. Oh, they were on today. I'm sorry. sorry. Yeah, they were on today. Council on tomorrow morning, right? Uh, yes, me and Council Cruz will be doing a duet on the uh, Ron Van Dam show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I have three cuts to, to move forward. I hereby move to reduce from the law department personal services other than overtime account by $52,000. The appropriation in that account is $553,239 to $501,239. Uh, all, all in favor of that amendment, please raise your hand. All opposed, please raise your hand. We might have to take a roll. I couldn't see. Yeah, the I couldn't see it either. I, I request a roll call vote, please. Can I ask to have it repeated? I'm sorry, Council. Can I have a uh, repeat, uh, Councilor Dubois? Sure, repeat, Councilor please? Dubois, please, uh, please read your uh, your Happy proposed to do amendment. It. I hereby move to reduce from the mayor's department. Oh, hmm? I'm reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> I hereby move to reduce from the law department personal services other than overtime account by $52,000. The appropriation in that account is $553,239 to $501,239. If you look in your budget, it's just right at the top line. Second. I'm going to take a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, if you could please read the roll. Shirley Azak. No. Shana Barnes. No. Timothy Cruz. No. Dennis DiNapoli. No. Michelle Dubois. Yes. Dennis Ianeri. Yes. Tom Monahan. No. Moises Rodriguez. No. Jazz Stewart. No. Paul Studensky. Yes. Robert Sullivan. Yes. Four to seven. Four Cons yeas. Consul, your amendment did not prevail. Thank you. Consul, did you say you had another amendment? I have another one. I hereby move to reduce from the mayor's department other Thank you. Uh, business and economic development account by $50,000. The appropriation in that account is $150,000 to $100,000. Is there a second on that? I'll second it for voting purposes. Second roll call vote. Thank you. Shirley Azak. No. Shana Barnes. No. Timothy Cruz. No. Dennis DiNapoli. No. Michelle Dubois. Yes. Dennis Ianeri. No. Tom Monahan. No. Moises Rodriguez. No. Jazz Stewart. No. Paul Studensky. No. Robert Sullivan. No. Council did not prevail. Thank you. 
And then my final is, I hereby move to reduce from the DPW Commissioner Department personal services other than overtime account by $40,000. The appropriation in that account is reduced from $283,110 to $243,110. So a second to that? No second, it dies. Okay, thank you. Council, does anybody else have any proposed amendments? Mr. Chairman? Council Cruz. Thank you. Uh, after speaking with uh, Mr. Condon, uh, I hereby remove uh, to reduce from the Treasurer's Debt Department uh, the account by $100,000. The appropriation in that account is reduced from $13,106,977 to $13,006,977. Second. Motion was made and it was properly seconded. All in favor of that amendment as proposed, raise your hand. All opposed? A motion carries. The amendment does prevail. Council Rodriguez, did you, you have yes, a sorry, proposed amendment? I do have amendment? one. Uh, I hereby move to reduce from the Law Department ordinary maintenance services account, account by 71522 The appropriation in that account is reduced from 371522 to $300,000. Is there a second? Second. second. There is a second. Motion was made on the amendment. It was seconded. All in favor of that, please raise your hand. All opposed? Motion carries. That amendment can, prevails. Excuse Counsel, me, could you, uh, just, I didn't write that down. How much was that? To 300,000. 300,000 300, from 371. Thank 71,000 deducted. 71,000. Okay. Counselors, is there any other proposed amendments? Could I just ask what that cut was one more time? Three was it seventy one thousand or was it seventy one thousand five hundred and twenty two? And twenty two, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Councillors, there's no other proposed amendments before us. Motion recommend favor. You have to make, make a motion to recommend the budget favorably as amended. Second. Second. Motion was made and uh, properly seconded uh, to recommend favorable back to the full city council fiscal year 2015 budget as amended. So, so the first vote, DPW, we're going to vote on D DPW Highway. DPW Highway, we're going to take a vote on. All in favor. All in favor. All against. All against. It carries. DPW Water. DPW Water, all in favor. A motion to recommend the budget favorably, okay. as amended, was made. And there's a couple departments that need separate votes. Because. Okay. Oh, I wish uh, Mr. Did. President, Mr. Chairperson, could I res rescind my initial vote of no on that first item, please? Sure, Council. Oh, thank you. DPW water budget is the question now. Okay. All in favor, please raise your hand. All against, raise your hand. That carries. DPW soar. DPW soar. All in favor. All against. That carries. Personnel. Personnel. All in favor. All against. It prevails. The budget as a whole as amended. Budget as a whole as amended. All in favor. All opposed. That prevails. There is a favorable recommendation back to the full city council. Councils, full city council will be meeting on Monday, June 23rd at 8 o'clock here in the chamber. I want to take this opportunity, councils, to thank each and every one of you, uh, specifically the three new councils that really bring some talent to the council. Uh, I remember nine years ago, my first budget. It's a daunting task, and I, I'm really proud of what we got accomplished here. I also want to take the opportunity to thank Karen and Anne Marie. I think we owe them a, a big thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I might, I, I also at this time want to commend you on the handling of the process here this year, um, as much as for what we had to go through and the tightness of this budget and the people that appeared before us. I think you, you did an outstanding job as Thank Council you. President and Chairman of the Finance Group through this process. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate that. Thank you.
nothing else before us. This uh, budget hearing is concluded, and it's hereby adjourned.